Now, the Fox Forecast Center is tracking signals that a potential polar vortex could once again be on the way by the time we get to about Thanksgiving. Temperatures, you know what that means, are going to take a big tumble. And of course, whenever we start talking about big old temperature tumbles, you look at your thermostat and you think to yourself, this thing is going to be working over time, right? And let's not even talk about what that electric bill could look like. Joining us now to break it all down is Fox Business contributor Phil Flynn. Phil, always great to have you with us here on a weekend morning. And my question is this, at least where we're located here in New York City, it got awfully cold over the past couple of days. What are families to do? Another polar vortex possibly on the way. You know, we'll have to crank up the heat. The, ace, the heating bills are going to be, you know, astronomical possibly, right? They sure will be. Uh, hang on to your wallet, Mike, because uh, this could be uh, one of the worst. You know, in fact, during this last polar vortex, you know, we saw the demand in some states go up almost 18 to 20 percent, uh, you know, just from that surge. And if you look at the cost of uh, natural gas, it was up 30 yes, percent month you. over month just because of this increase here, so the last few months. So it was pretty incredible uh, run up away here. Natural gas prices up 60% on the year. And if, and if this is just a forerunner of what we're gonna see this winter, you know, we could see the most expensive heating bills we've seen maybe in 10 years. Yeah, I mean, Phil, is there any sort of idea here that like what could happen later in the, the fall and winter season? Does it look like there's any sort of reprieve possible where maybe the bills won't be as expensive? I'm counting on you for that, Michael. That's up to you guys over there at the Weather <laughs> Channel, right? I, I, I'm telling everybody, if you want to know, download your Fox Weather app to watch us because it's moving the energy markets. That's what I'm telling my clients every day. You know, and, and I don't want to say that you guys put the Farmer's Almanac out of business, but, you know, it's a coincidence, maybe. I don't know. I don't think so. But, no, I mean... What we're seeing this year, I think, when it comes to weather, is going to be so impactful on the economy uh, and for your personal economy. You know, because, as you know, Michael, we haven't had a below average winter in over a decade, yeah. right? And so I don't know if the market's really prepared for this. We're seeing warning signs uh, in the refining sector. We're seeing refining margins to, to create heating fuels at the highest level. Uh, you know, since uh, 2012, I believe. So these are all warning signs that if it really is a knockdown, drag out winter, you know, you're going to see some pretty high bills. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And Phil, let me ask you about this. You mentioned briefly about the energy sector. What about how, you know, cold weather and all can impact things like farming and the agricultural sectors, too? Right. I mean, right now, I mean, at this time of year, they're, they're pretty prepared for it. You know, the harvest is pretty done, uh, but actually they want a lot of snow. Uh, the subsoil moisture in some parts of the country isn't what they'd like to see it. So, it, uh, you know, in some of these drought areas uh, that we've seen, uh, parts of Indiana, they would love to see a lot of snow cover uh, to rebuild that up. But I think, you know, the other thing, of course, is people wanting to travel. I mean, we're, we're talking about the holiday weekend and the demand for energy is going to be impacted by the weather. You know, we're expecting, you know, the third highest amount of people traveling more than 50 miles, you know, from AAA, 55 million people and planes and trains and automobiles, you know, record demand uh, for Amtrak, believe it or not, the, this holiday season. But that all can change. You know, if you get weather and that keeps people home or slows that down a bit, it can have a big impact on prices. You know, Phil, I was at the grocery store uh, literally the day before yesterday, and I loved grabbing, you know, chicken, turkey, the whole, you know, kitten caboodle. I mm. happened to notice turkey prices. Those turkey prices yeah. were out of this world. What, what are your thoughts on what's yeah. going on with that, you know, on the heels of Thanksgiving? You know, I, th I think when you look at uh, the meat sector in general, uh, it's, it's really tight. You know, we've gone through this cycle. We have the smallest cattle herd in years. We've had bird flu, which has reduced uh, some of the bird crop and the turkey crop. You know, so we have tighter supplies than normal, right? Now, the good thing is, is if you look at the overall Thanksgiving table, there's some things that are actually going to be cheaper than last year. But those turkeys, I don't know if we're going to keep those down this year. You might want to look at uh, lasagna. Anya, you know, maybe use an American-made pasta that could save you some money. So, Wow. Interesting stuff there. Yeah, that, that turkey may be a little bit more pricey, but hopefully the stuffing, that's actually my favorite part of the, uh, the Thanksgiving setting. 
Hopefully the prices yeah. on that might not be as high. Phil, you know, I always appreciate when you join us here on Fox, whether your insight is always appreciated. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. Have a great weekend. Thanks. And if I don't hear from you, have a great Thanksgiving as well. You too, sir.